Yo, what is up, YouTube? It is Computer Genetics here with a uh, Computer Craft video showcase. Uh, what I'll be showing off in this um, in this video is of a program I made. Some of you guys may know it. It's called the uh, Elnex or Elnex I for Computer Craft in Minecraft. Uh, what this um, program does in a short, it's basically a complete uh, software or security program that uh, you can. That's what it's mainly designed to do. So it supports server and database. Um, uh, like it stores passwords on the server. And it can have, I believe, as of now, I've tested with over 200 computers and there's been no problems. Um, so I'm just going to be doing here, I'm going to be showcasing the video kind of, maybe doing some editing on the code. It depends on uh, how, how well it works. Um, so I guess we can get started. Uh, first and foremost, this project's been active, I don't know, for a couple months, uh, since, I think, uh, November 2012, um, and it's now April 2013. It might have actually been a little bit before when I very first started the beta build, but it's come very a long way. I've added a lot of features, and I remember when it was just the very beat basics and these little short programs, and I've added uh, a lot more very advanced programs. And it's still in the works, and uh, in version 7.7 .7 is about to be released. That'll support a lot of new features, and I'm really excited. Um, so I guess I can start showing you guys exactly what this all is all about. Now, if you hear, I have a computer craft emulator. I love this emulator. Check out the guy; it's on Minecraft forums. I'll put a link in the description. But you can run computer uh, computer craft environment without having to load up Minecraft. So what I got here is I have a virtual server that I've already, you can download this via ccget or I'm working on a uh, one that you can install through a disk because some people have been requesting that. But I still like ccget and it's a free API. Just download it from ccget.didranger.com. I'll have that in the description as well, but um, I'll go over that maybe later. But so this is the server window and what I was aiming for at first, when I first started, I just want to get it to work and be able to store passwords and stuff. And the very first build I ever made, only one computer could have one password. Um, but here, uh, in here, I uh, created a start with maintenance thing, except yes or no. Uh, maintenance is like if you want to go and edit files or change uh, passwords that you want your computer to be able to hold. So if you have like an admin, admin network or something, that'll work. This, is, this also works with the wired modems. And the, the the local area networks, the LAN, so that's pretty cool. So if you just want to close network. Um, so when you when you download the program, you'll run through an installation. Unfortunately, I can't show you the installation because these computers can have them ready. And all this over here, this is all updated code. I've been working on in the last couple of days, and I haven't put it to the new uh, project yet. But I can show you, showcase that stuff here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit no for start with maintenance. And first and foremost, you can see the server status open in servicing. This will automatically open RedNet for you, so you don't need to worry about that. Um, RedNet API, like open, close, and channels and everything. You don't need to worry about that. Also, it'll give you the server ID that you can put, you have to put in when you're setting up your client um, for your, um, oh, what's it called? Uh, when you connect into the server, it just puts a number into a con configuration file. That's where it loads every time. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to boot up the client. Now, in that short time, I think I believe ran about 100 lines of code that exchanges two different uh, messages. One, it will it's uh, requests access to the server and using random channels, and then um, it gets the passwords prepared and stuff. Now, here on the main menu, this is called the security preface. It's available for, down, uh, for installation during the setup with the... Um, when you first set up the file and you download it, it's uh, if you want it, you can download it, install it. But this is the main menu, so you have login, create account, shut down and reboot. Obviously, shut down and reboot are very self-explanatory. Um, create account, uh, for example, if I just go in here real quick and hit create new account, it'll say create new password, and um, let's just do YouTube. Okay, confirm. And then it'll say account creation status complete. 
if we go over here into where the server is, um, ID, and see this is the password we just created. So there's that. Um, sorry, this is my fault, this is my fault. There we go, okay. So it creates accounts and it lives updates, and you can have up to five, which is completely customizable in the server. So if I, that's what you would want to start with maintenance or something if you wanted to. Um, so that's that. Now, if I go into login, now when you when you start for the very first time, the password is just like nothing. Like as soon as you hit login, you just enter again, it logs in. Also, which is freaking amazing, is it auto updates. So when you log in, if there's any updates, it'll download and install them for you. Um, so also this is uh, it prevents termination. This whole entire program. The, the server does it, but the clients do, so you don't have people hacking your stuff. So this is the password. This is a completely different program than the security preface, just allowing any access to your files or sent uh, arrays. If you can see up here in this upper one, you can see the arrays that were sent with the passwords. It'll tell you the date and also, the, uh, not the date, the time and then the computer number. So if you go into here, I'll just create that one. So if I do YouTube, we log in. Log in. All right. So what you guys see right here, this is what I've been working on the last couple months. This is called RestroShell, or in the in my program, it's just called Brun. Now what this does, which is I find to be really essential and actually really cool to use, um, basically it creates a restricted account to whatever you, the user logged in with. So remember how we created that YouTube right here, oops, that YouTube account right here. The, it creates a it creates your own directory and it prevents you from going up to the root or ROM. So if I try to go to ROM here, uh, you see file containment error, unauthorized execution of command, escape locked directory. So basically, my program is smart enough to detect if you're trying to leave its own uh, locked directory. And I'll even go into more stuff that this program can do later. But obviously, there are some limitations, like some commands like uh, when you would do before in just a regular shell, you do cc dot dot. You can't do that. You have to use CC or CDU to uh, go up up on the hierarchy or your folder hierarchy, which I will demonstrate later. Uh, let's see what else. So it also prevents any execution of the shell. So if you do, if you type in shell, it types it says denied and it does not let you access to the shell, which is a big security feature. Um, yeah, it does support disk disk drives, fortunately. And it's smart enough to de prevent users from going up to the ROM from the disk, trying to bypass the disk, the uh, the whole your whole account. I don't have a disk drive. You can't use disk drives on this. But in order to do that, you would do change directory to DD disk, and it'll change your to disk drive. Navigate the disk drive normally, and then just CDU all the way back up to your local directory. And also, you can't even you can't CD up past your own local directory, fortunately. <laughs> okay, so um, let's see. That's uh. That's that so far. Now, what I'm going to demonstrate real quick is, you know, some people might, um, some people might try to use like uh, shell dot run um, shell to bypass running it through the command line. But my program, I have included something you guys might think is really cool. Break. Policy error, external shell call identified and break, denying execution. So it prevents the code from being executed if it detects anything like that. So that's fortunate if you guys want to have that in your programs. Um, I'm also going to be working on a whitelist and blacklist so you can add to programs or strings that you want to use. It's all included in the FitX API, which is included in the download. It's, installate, it's installed when you go through the installation setup. FitX API is freaking awesome. It checks your, it can check your entire file file system for any files. It can uh, check to see if a file contains a certain string or anything you want. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's see. Um, also, when you create any time you file run up restor uh, fire up restor shell, it creates a temporary directory. So if you want to use some admin. Like if you want, if you want your admin to create like logs of what the player does, you just gotta write some code and write to the temporary directory. Now I'm just saying the temporary directory is reset after every time the program reruns. It has a uh, um, temporary directory. 
Um, infinite amount of users, which I think is awesome. Connection info is always preserved. Security uh, does prevent access from for, to access all these, so you're completely fine. See file containment last execution of command escape block directory. Um, also, which I think is a very big bonus, is this program is going to be designed to work with uh, as a standalone program. So if you don't want this thing, my whole the whole time my whole type package, though I recommend it because it's designed to work like that. You can always just download the Restor shell, incorporate it however you want. It's uh, you can you use it by typing run in the account name you want. So if I were to do like uh, computer genetics, it'll set up my own local directory called computer genetics, lock me just like I'm in the YouTube. Also, if you want at the end, you can type true. Oops. True, and this will make the um, this account not run Russia shell, so you can make kind of make it like an admin. So you can have like an admin account. Now, what I'm also going to show you guys real quick is if I go to login. Now, I've also designed it so the very first account created on the computer is automatically an admin account. Now, I'm not sure if you guys would want that or not, but whatever. If you want, I mean, I did. That's like an admin account. So if I go in and log into the very first account I made, uh, wait, oop, that my friend is a problem. So time for some good old debugging. Um, that's gonna be under here. Let's try this again. There we go. See, it'll execute, it'll take you right away to the shell if you're the first account to be created, as you can see here. First account is right there. So, in a nutshell, that's pretty much it. There is also a standard version that does not use your uh, database, but that only supports one user per computer. So, if you just have like workstations or something, that would be a very smart thing to do. Um, and you do not need to install Restor Shell when you install LNX, which is a big bonus. Um, uh, so you don't have to have it if you don't want it. You just want complete access to you got that one computer you're installing it to. You just want everyone to be admins. And yeah, that's perfectly fine. If you want to do that, that's uh, what you want. That's what you do. Um, let's see what else I can explain. You know, I might go through the installation, even though this installation does not have the new features yet. I am saying that right now. Uh, let's create a new computer. Now I'll guys, run you guys through the uh, how to install us. So if you can CC get install LNXI. And also, if you're using the one, with, if you're you're using the run without using the LNXI with it, it'll auto download the API for you and save it to a folder called APIs. And the folder, it's called Fidix. Fidix is the API I made it, file indexer. So that's pretty cool, so you need to download any other files. All right, so you can see LNXI version 7.6 is installed. Now what I'm gonna do right here, you don't need to do it. In reality, you would just type LNXI, but I don't have aliases set up, so I just have to go to directly where I set it, saved it. And just run LNXI. Okay, it's like software package. As of now, it's just LNX security system. I might upgrade just to win if you just want to install run uh, or the rest of shell. I'm actually probably actually, that's a really good idea. I'm going to do that later. Um, so you see LNX version, LNX security system, LNX security system, LNX security system. Um, in reality, you always want to install the database first. And it is cross compatible, even though I highly unrecommend. So I would always recommend that the server and the, um, the client are on the same version since I might have made some updates to the uh, communication methods and you always want to keep those up to date. So for, uh, for here, I'm just going to do uh, client database. All right, in, uh, security preface, install, skip, return. You can uh, return if you want to. You can skip this if, if you don't want to install the security preface, which is just the password or like the login stuff. But then 
you can only create one file or you have to have your admin create it for you but I'm just going to install it server ID I'm just going to use zero again and it detects mismatches uh, see it'll, it'll just keep asking you over and over again uh, so we'll just do zero zero okay rest your shell warning still in beta there are some on functionality like I'm working on adding backslash support as of now you can only uh, work with commands uh, that do not use backslash support but as of now it'll be I guess you guys really don't need to worry about that um, the what's this is unfortunately I'm still working on the out of the bugs with it so it's kind of being stupid but uh so I can go ahead and hit skip if I want I'm gonna skip this also, if you have any other previous versions, always overwrite them and delete any files so you don't have to worry about people trying to hack it. Alright, so this is what I'm talking about, the default thing. If I don't have any password, just hit enter and you're logged in. Okay, notice how the rest of the shell does not work. You just have on that security system client. And that's completely fine. Um, one thing I would like to mention real quick is... Um, Hold on, sorry. Okay. If for some whatever reason, if you would like, like for temporarily, if you would like uh, RestorShill not to be running, you can log into your admin account as like this. Just log into the very first account. Okay. And then what you want to do is navigate to where it says LNX. Oops, sorry. Change directory to LNX. And then change directory to client DB database now that would be different uh, if it was on the standard version which is a uh, client SA but you don't need to worry about that and then what you can do is change directory to security security um, this config file is automatically generated so you only need to worry about creating it and you're just going to edit config and it's enabled to false then just reboot your computer for changes I was creating one of my other accounts. Logged in. And do you notice that the shell is just normal? I can execute all the normal stuff. See? And that's just fine. So that's basically it right now. All I have to really do in order to get a really nice stable release is, um, uh, what's it called? Come on, we got one. Yeah. Um, you just have to fin finish the uh, help file for the rest of shell and add backslash support. I might add a couple other things, but uh, the API I might make available for download by itself. Um, it's kind of still in work and development, but as of now, the function that contains is perfectly functional. And uh, I highly recommend using that because it's really, really useful. Um, I believe that's all I really wanted to talk about today. Uh, I'm working on possibly, possibly, maybe adding SQL support, although it's highly, probably not going to be a function I'm going to incorporate. Um, so that's all I probably really wanted to go over you guys today. I'll be releasing kind of a 7.6.5 release soon, just to incorporate some of these features, although they're not, like I said, not completely finished. I will be doing that sometime this week, so uh, keep your heads up for that. Um, and I'll have a forum post on Computer Craft Forums, link in the description. So, uh, thank you guys for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, and download the program and make yourself more secure. Thank you, and have a good day. Goodbye.